come to uh, perform. They're going to be performing tonight and all weekend. So thank you guys so much for being here and for opening up. That's the best opening I've ever had. I've ever had. Um, and before I introduce the panel, I just want to bring on some of my favorite Naperville people. Mayor Steve and Julie Cherico. I'm just so excited to be here, and it made so much sense to do the show in Naperville. So I want to thank Potters. This is my good friend, Matt, and um, just the, the owners of Potters, and just my friends for all coming here. Being out. We got a studio audience, <laughs> which is fantastic. So I just want to start off with introductions. Um, we'll start with you, Mayor Steve, who really needs no introduction. Oh, you want me to introduce myself? I want you to introduce yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, you guys. I'm Mayor Steve Cherico. Uh, thanks for having us today. My, um, my wife, Julie. Hi. Hi, Julie. How are you? Good, good, good. I am Ashley Burkholz from Naperville. I am Megan Ginley from Naperville. I grew up here. I'm Alexis Dunn, and I'm Megan's sister. And I may have asked the mayor an inappropriate question. I made a show a while back, but I did not know it was the mayor. So. <laughs> My name is uh, Kim Marino, and I also grew up in Naperville. My name is Katie Minot, and um, Naperville is my new home. All right. Uh, I'm Matt Galanis. I uh, work in Naperville. I uh, grew up in Wheaton. I uh, used to live in Naperville, now I live in Aurora, and maybe back to Naperville again in the future. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Jason yeah. Sturman. How you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> I kind of grew up in Naperville, but I've been here for about half my life, so it's great to be here. And this is a uh, I've got this one now. <laughs> I'm Mike Aquino. I live in Plainfield, but I spend so much time here. This is like a second home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My sound guy. Yeah, sound guy. You're being uh, you're being yeah. Yeah. I'm Mike Aquino. I uh, live in Plainfield, uh, but I've spent the last 15 years working here in Naperville. Well, thank you all so much for being here. And before we go any further, I just want to say that. This is what the mothers of Naperville look like during drop off in the morning. Yeah. 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 So hot. Yeah. 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 I paid her 20 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, my first question is, is how long have you lived in Naperville? And this is for, well, Mayor Steve, you've been, you're from Naperville here as well, right? I am indeed. Yeah, I've been here for uh, 57 years. Wow. Yeah, 58 years. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a Five years? Uh, yeah. Newbies. Yeah. Newbies. 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 Uh, I grew up here, had a little stint in Chicago, and then uh, made in my city. Yes, in the big city. And then made my family move back here because I loved it so much. <laughs> 15 years I've been here. So, yeah, been wonderful. So, what's one of the things that you appreciate most? For those of you who were born here, for those of you who are from here, what is one of the things that you appreciated most about Naperville when you were a child? 
I'll go first since I have the mic. Um, I think that um, everyone that lived here was so welcoming all throughout my um, elementary school years and even junior high, high school years. I felt like everyone in this community just um, stayed together, looked out for each other, and um, that was just one thing I wanted my kids to experience. So that's why I was so adamant about moving back here. Agree, you know, and I think that's still the same. You know, we all stick together and we all have each other's back, I think, for like our neighborhoods and um, and also the school district as well. Right? So yeah. Meg and I both lived in Chicago for a while and we had our kids in Chicago initially and um, we both knew we wanted to move back to Naperville just because we had such a good childhood growing up here and you know, friends and sports teams and just the education was awesome. Um, so, we love being with that. Really, my husband wanted me back here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. And I will have to say that you did buy a house a block away from me. Yes. Your <laughs> neighbors. Yes. What's one thing that has changed about Naperville um, since you were younger? But this is my section. <laughs> this is your section, like, no fun. No, 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 no. <laughs> you've had the, you've had the most changed. tenure. Like when I moved to Naperville, there was 12,000 people. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of change. And how big is Naperville now? 147,000. Yeah. yeah. So a lot's changed, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, um, certainly downtown has retained its charm. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it feels the same to me. It's, just, it's better. But it feels a lot the same to me. And we are in the heart of downtown right now. We're we're live from two nights. Thanks to yeah. thanks to Matt. Woo! Woo! I appreciate Potters and Two Nine for hosting us. We are literally in the heart of downtown, uh, Naperville. And so it's it's nice. It's great. I think the moms have gotten a lot hotter. Since <laughs> Let's do something for one another. It just has really impacted me. 
being from the north side as well. North Shore girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo! And being here for over a decade, I feel like I'm glad and happy my kids get to call Neighborville home because I feel like they can say they're from Neighborville and what they have to give is so much more than what I ever could even imagine for them to have to give back to that's true. Now, I got a tough question, and no pressure, just because there's dignitaries in the room. <laughs> if you were mayor, what's one thing that you would do for the city? We know, so Alexis's nickname is the mayor, because Alexis knows everybody. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. The next mayor, no shade, uh, tell us tell us what she would do. What she would do? Well, I wear a really nice pantsuit, <laughs> but I really did have an idea because I was just in Hawaii, and everywhere there they have all these like refillable water stations, like you see in the, the airport. I so like, no, no, just like you know, like maybe like six refillable water stations that like you know Potter's Place hosts one of them, and they are in charge of the maintenance. And so you just less plastic bottles, better for the environment. And I would love that. So that's my idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> We're over here changing, changing the world on Data yes. Being Data. Yes. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Anybody else? No pressure. He's listening. Now's your chance. And, yeah. and he can and see us. They can see us. Yeah. <laughs> I have it's a, great and perfect. I have yes, a, I do. I do. Oh, wait. The train station. Can, can audience participate? No, yes. I'm oh. Train <laughs> station parking. Have more of that. Or, I'm sorry, I've been on the wait list for eight years for a parking spot, and I am still not even close. I think so, that's happening. It's because, people, that is are, happening. People, because people are sharing parking wish. spots, and I don't think that's correct, and that's right. No, they said they're working on it. Yeah, wish granted. Okay. Close to downtown Naperville, and just hearing the music. I like being here at Potter's. 
It's actually how I met these guys. I could hear the music from my house, and I ventured out, it was three years ago, we sat and thought about it, when I first came down here, and Junkyard Groove was playing, and um, I, I became a regular, so much that Matt recognized me. <laughs> because I'm so diverse. <laughs> and that's just kind of how we became friends, which was awesome. So I appreciate you know, how we've come a long way and just being here, just the, the, the sense of community is very strong in Naperville. And maybe that's a testament to our, to our wonderful mayor, but it's also a testament to the citizens who make up Naperville. I also like the little friends of autism. I'm great. Yeah. Yes. As my son is autistic, so we are always participating in that. So that's what I like. So, yes. As you walk in, yes. 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 Yes.
Um, I see you guys reading my notes. So that's cool. <laughs> like, what are we talking it's about all next? good. So, so everybody's been involved in so many different charities. And I want to start off, I mean, everybody, which is what I love. It's kind of like, what charity are you in? Nice to meet you. Um, but I want to just talk about the different things that you guys are, have been doing. And Kim, I want to start with you. Um, I know you're a part of Batting for a Cure. Can you explain what, what Batting for a Cure is and more about it? Sure. So I am the founder and president of Batting for a Cure Foundation. And um, it is named after my father, um, Joe Waller, Batting for a Cure, because he was a longtime baseball coach at Naperville Central. And we raise money for cancer patients in the Naperville area who can't afford their chemotherapy treatments. We help fund them and also help with their medical bills. And then we also fund a camp every year. It's called Camp Hope. And children get to attend this week-long camp that we fund. And they're able to really meet with counselors and um, go through art therapy and just be around other children who are going through the same thing. Their parents are undergoing chemotherapy and having surgery. And it's such a, a unique situation for these little children to go through when they see that their hero is struggling. And um, we're able to um, fund that. And um, last year and this year, we'll be able to attend it as well. And it's fun to spend the day with them. They're just these cute little kids who are having to go through such a, a unique and very hard situation. So um, we do a golf outing every single year to help fund um, this, uh, help fund Camp Hope and help um, give out uh, to the Edwards Cancer Center um, a donation check every single year. So we do that. And then we also work with the Ronald McDonald House over um, Christmas time and we do a toy drive and um, Every children, every child that's staying at the Ronald McDonald House um, at Edwards Hospital gets a toy every single year too. Um, that's spending um, the holidays at the hospital. It's awesome. That is truly, truly awesome. Uh, Woo! I, I think it's so impressive. And these are the things we talk about in drop off when yeah. we take our kids to school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We look so pretty. Uh, we, we look, look like this. We wake up like this, yeah. everybody. Yes, do. Um, can you tell us about the hats? Because they're sure. super stylish yes. and cute. Um, so every year um, I work with uh, Love Your Melon. I'm sure a lot of you have known about this organization. Why don't you model it for me? It's Love Your Melon. Love Your Melon is an organization that helps pediatric um, cancer patients. And all of the money that um, the hats go to go to all of the pediatric, um, the Ronald McDonald House and the pediatric center. So I brought um, this to our community as well. So. Um, we sell these hats through battingforacare.com and um, the proceeds go to um, Edwards Cancer Center as well. So, And these are the hats we're rocking in yes. drop-off. Drop oh, yeah. So this is actually in how April. we really look in drop-off. Yeah. Like yes. yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like this. Yeah. Sunglasses. They're fabulous nonetheless. Yeah. So let, let me know if any of you guys want one. So you can, take it you, you can wear it if you want to. You can wear it if you want to. So Katie, I want to turn to you next. Um, back in December, Katie invited me and others to donate gifts to Gift Mart. And I was overwhelmed by how many people showed up, how many gifts we brought out, and what we did with all of those gifts. So I was, I mean, and I know Katie because she is, is, like is one of the best looking moms at drop off. <laughs> But I was so impressed with what she was doing. And I had recently talked to Mayor Steve about doing this show. And I said, Katie, I'm doing a show in April. I would love to talk more about Gift Mart and what you're doing because I'm so impressed with what you did. So can you tell us all about Gift Mart and, and what you do? Yes, I would love to, so just tell me when to stop. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, <laughs> Gift Mart is this idea of charity reimagined during the holidays. Uh, traditional charity often involves um, or at least for me, my experience with traditional charity, I sort of knew a limited about amount of information about a child. I had the opportunity to shop for that child, um, uh, drop the gift off somewhere, present gets wrapped, goes under the tree. And then as I became a parent, I started to not only wonder about the child, but I wondered about the parent. Like as parents, that's not like the dream, right? It's not what we imagine, or that's not the plan. But things happen along the way that kind of derail um, 
what our vision was for our future. And so I started to think about the parent, and then I realized that other people were thinking about the parent too. And there was this um, very caring individual who was also an activist named Kirsten Strand, who started Community 412. And she, part of that, um, what she started was the Gift Mart program. And what we do at Gift Mart is that we collect all of these toys, but we give the families the opportunity to shop for them in a toy shop that we've set up in local schools. Um, thousands of people participate, thousands of um, people volunteer throughout the community, throughout the um, sub-communities around us in order to um, make these events happen. The location I'm at, we have about a thousand people that day. We set up the toy shop, families come in, we watch their children and we play games and we do crafts with them. So the parents pick out and are involved in what the gift is. And then the parent goes to gift wrap and we treat them with respect and with dignity, like they're there for a shopping event. And so that helps them kind of hold their head up high and be a part of it. And so it was this whole concept of like, could a gift be more than a gift? Could it be hope? Could it re-spark um, some excitement in me and a dream in me? Um, and I think that we've been able to see that happen because a lot of our leaders now, not a lot of our leaders, but some of our leaders um, were at one time participants and their lives were changed. Um, and that, that's what we're trying to do. I think it's awesome. And just seeing all of the toys, seeing all the gifts, that our school community had put. Yeah. Was it just our school? So for the um, so for the event that I host, um, our community, our little neighborhood, was actually the largest toy drive. Yeah. But I just want to give amazing kudos to the school districts because um, the support that we've received, like teachers are volunteering on their days off so that they can be there caring for the children because we want background checked individuals upstairs. So they're taking that extra day. Principals are turning out and um, they're the ones collecting the toys too. So the majority of our toys come from other elementary students. So we're teaching our children how to give back to the community. We're teaching them that all of our lives don't look exactly the same and that's okay. And I think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> Alexis and Megan. And these two are like my sisters. I mean, we, yes. we go way back, and they've really been there for me. We could go on and on about that. But we're going to talk about your charitable work, yes. um, angiosarcoma awareness. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about, about the charity that you guys support yes. as a family, our family? So, <laughs> so we're kind of new to this charity biz. Um, my husband, a year and like three months ago, got diagnosed with stage 4 angiosarcoma, which I'm a physician and I've never heard of it before. So it's a very rare, about 300 people a year get it. It's very aggressive. Um, it's like worse than pancreatic cancer almost. So um, so it's very rare aggressive cancer. Um, so it's cancer of the soft tissues. Thank you. <laughs> As late people. Yes, yes. Right. yes. Can cancer of the soft tissues. Um, but it could, I mean, there's sarcoma, sarcomas can be anything, but this one is more, it looks like the lining of blood vessels, basically. So that's why it's called the injury sarcoma. Um, so anyway, so because there's not a lot of money for research, uh, my friend in January kind of pushed me to start this charity. Um, just, we're doing the Naperville Women's Half Marathon and 5K. And we've got a hundred and... Emphasis on 5K. Yes. For some of them. <laughs> we've got almost 150 women running for us. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we've raised almost $70,000 as of today. So, um, so it's great because it's just a very rare cancer. There's not a lot of money going towards it. So we raise... Where it's all going to research. It's going for um, the only angiosarcoma research foundation that's here in the world. So, yeah. All the people working for them, it's volunteers, so they're not getting paid. So that's just yeah. another. And the the woman that decides, right. yeah, yeah, the woman that decides where the money goes, she actually is an angiosarcoma survivor herself. So, yeah. Awesome. Ashley, <laughs> Cal's Angels. Yes, Cal's Angels, um, very near and dear to my heart. My daughter is one and a half years in remission. Um, it's been amazing for us. Um, they grant wishes, raise awareness, and donate for research. So their mission is war on pediatric cancer, which is amazing. Only 4% of the national funds goes to pediatric cancer research, which to me I just can't understand. 
Um, but Cal's has done amazing things. And what they do to bring in the neighborhoods and to bring in the community to be involved is also, it, it just touches your heart to a point where you, you know what it impacts you. And Alexis and I have talked about this. And it's just a difference. Like, there's a different connection to those people and they will, that will never be the same. And so Cal's is just, near and dear to my heart, and they raise money for can cancer awareness research and wishes for those kids who want something special, whether it be gifts for their siblings for Christmas, or whether it is a Xbox for themselves, Xbox for themselves, or a trip to the Wisconsin Dells. So thank you. Just all the efforts, and, and for me, what's so powerful is that these are just, these are my friends, and I just appreciate and admire all of you guys for just doing so many awesome things. Oh. Go ahead. And the Goo Goo Dolls, Cal's Angels, yes, the Goo Goo Dolls, yep. on July 14th at Aramore yep. with Gavin DeGraw, and it is a benefit concert. I'm going. Um, Cal's Angels is <laughs> I'm going. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it will be an amazing night. Um, Aramore is BYOB. Um, Goo Goo Dolls and Gavin, Gavin DeGraw, it should be an awesome. It's like Romania. It's, it's like Romania, yeah. but in Oswego and more accessible. It's going to be a good time. And I will post all this information about where you can donate to all of these charities. We're going to be raising money this weekend for these charities and support for these families as well. So please come out. Um, before we switch topics, I just want to shout out someone who's very near and dear and special to me. Thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> it is my sound guy. But it's it's someone who's been a super fan of the show. When I talk about like liking every post, sharing every video, being just amazing and incredibly, truly, truly awesome, um, I want you to come up here. This is Devana. <laughs> Devana was on my show. So Ashley and Alexis were both on my cancer show that I had a couple weeks ago. And Devana was also on the show. Um, we're raising money for Devana as well. She wasn't able to make it into the studio. Do you want to tell them about, about your cancer? I have multiple myeloma. It is an incurable cancer. It is treatable, however. Um, but that means that the symptoms will wax and wane in between um, treatments. Or when the cancer, I've never reached remission. So, but it is stable, the cancer is stable. I've had one stem cell transplant. I will probably need another, my own stem cells, and then after that, um, the next day, the next treat, uh, form of treatment would be uh, allo um, allogenic. Yes, stem cell <laughs> transplant, which is somebody else's yes. stem cells. And then, after, so it's a process that I'm still on chemo. I will be on chemo till um, the cancer rears its head again, and then I will do a different chemo chemo regimen. But um, Three years right now. Yeah. So Devana wasn't able to make the show, and so I wanted to make sure she didn't want to be up here. <laughs> but this is the peer pressure of live TV shows or, or, or video shows. So I just wanted you to know how much I love you, yeah, and how much, you. how much I appreciate you. you, and just I mean, of course, everybody. But this was very special because she didn't, she wasn't able to be in the studio with us when we did the show. I was sick. So this is your studio, boo. We are so happy to have you. And I'm so glad you got to be here with us on the show. So now, we're about to flip the script a little bit, and we're about to get all in the mayor's business. Let's get funky. Yeah. Sure. So everybody have a drink. Everybody have a drink. Who wants a drink? We got drinks coming, we got orders coming out. No, um, I, I consider you, Mayor Steve and Julie, good friends. And I just appreciate, I see you guys at all the, at the museum events and just out in the street, out in these Naperville streets. And um, I just appreciate your leadership and just how kind and generous you guys are to just everybody. So I just wanted to find out how's it going? How is it, how are you tonight? And, and how do you feel being mayor? Well, first of all, 
I mean, this is exactly what makes Naperville such a special place. Yeah! Yeah. Hearing these, listening to your, these women's stories and what you're doing, the safety net in Naperville that provides all these little balances for all these different lives and families that we have is really what makes this place such an attractive place to raise a family. And I have to say that we have won those accolades over the years of best place to raise a family. And this is why. Because families are very different. They all look very different. And everyone that has uh, something that's not maybe just like the normal life has a place to go and has help. And so thank you for what you're doing. And we just actually came, Julie and I just came from a Loaves and Fishes event earlier tonight. And uh, they did a, uh, a chef, what was it, a chef contest, top chef kind of contest. Did like, you win? We, they split us up. Oh. And yes, I did win. Oh. Naperville Street. His wife should be charming. So, we, uh, light. Yeah. so we appreciate all that uh, that makes this 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 city like what it is. Is, is all these different uh, groups and organizations. Thank you. Shouts uh, out to our, our waitress, Vinny. She's amazing. You know, so so living here, growing up here, uh, it's really about um, what makes the you know the fabric of Naperville. It's really all the different social agencies different groups and the support groups and the families that help each other and neighborhoods and, and this is this is what it's about. People who come and visit here, they like us because we have great restaurants and the river walk and music and festivals. The people who live here live here because of the families, the support, and the structure behind a great community. So it's just it's awesome. And it, you know, for me to be a mayor is just I don't know what else to say. I I grew up here Having lived no place else, I have no benchmark, but I can tell you that intuitively I know that this is a special place. Did you go to Central? Um, I went to both. Ooh. Oh, wow. The school was split. Really? I went to North my first year and Central my last three years. So I'll wear my North wow. sweatshirt in the first quarter, <laughs> my Central sweatshirt in the last three years. Fair enough. It's, like, it's like a Switzerland type of answer. <laughs> My kids went to Niqua. Stop it! The people's mayor, ladies and gentlemen. The people's mayor. Julie, question for you. What excites you about Naperville? What do you love about the city? My husband, the mayor. Yeah! Yes! Woo! Like a two first lady. He is hot. I gave her a script. There you go. Stick to this script. Um, I love that it's a place that my children want to move back to because they all grew up here. And it's funny, my oldest daughter, when she was in high school, pretty rebellious, she went to Central, she had her dad, and, her dad. and um, she just wanted, could not wait to get out of Naperville. She was going to go as far away as possible, school in California, the whole bit. So she ended up going to the same school I went to, uh, ended up um, moving to Peoria, and all she wanted to do was in Naperville. She now lives a mile from how she was raised. Her son's going to go to the same school she went to. But I love that our children are coming back. And that's one of the things that I know that we're working, that Steve is working hard on, is to make it a community that continues to be progressive, continues to be what people want to come back to and raise their families. So we're very fortunate and blessed. And we have a blended family of seven that I think we're going to talk about. Yep. Yeah. Um, Favorite child is named Dana. <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. That's what she says. We love That's what she says. Yes. Yes. But right now we have um, five girls, two boys, and all five girls are in the area. So we're really, really It's nice. Awesome. And it's truly, it's truly, truly a blessing. Yes. Um, what's one of the things that impresses me about you both is that um, you're such, fam you're such a family-oriented couple. And before we get into your family, I want to get back to the beginning. I want to talk about um, how you two met. How we met? Yeah, how you met? <laughs> Actually, it's a it ties, great it ties in beautifully. It's a great Naperville story because we met at a charity event. We met at a charity yes, event. Yes, yes. See what happens when you serve the community? You <laughs> end up first lady. Yes, that's right. Yes, Naperville response. Steve was part of the group that started Naperville response after Hurricane Katrina. Okay. And um, I went to one of the meetings, and he was charming and funny the whole way through. And, 
And so, Mayor Steve, can you tell us, if you don't mind sharing, how you proposed? Uh -oh. Well, when she asked me to marry <laughs> we fell in love immediately. Oh. Like, literally, at that meeting, at the April response, I mean, I look back and I'm like, she's amazing. And so, she is. I asked her to coffee. We went to Starbucks right there in River Plaza. Aww. Had coffee, and we dated every day ever since. Well, we did it every day until we got married. Yeah. And like, and one, by the way, one of our first uh, dates, well, our first official date was an art fair. It wasn't the Riverwalk art fair, it was, it was Cantina. Oh, okay. But, um, Cantina, excuse me, Cantina, yeah. But, um, yeah, so we were, uh, we fell in love very quickly and we were, we were married pretty, like a year and a half after we met, right? That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, but, but he left out the part about how he would be and propose because it's embarrassing for him. <laughs> Thank you for taking the microphone. Yes. <laughs> so we were in the, one of these restaurants in Chicago where the tables are super close. And he asked me to marry him. And then he got all um, emotional. So he I'm left. Cold. I'm sure he did. <laughs> it was breezy. So he left the table. So he had an emotional bell. <laughs> Can we get this man a tissue? Yeah. <laughs> he left the table to go to the bathroom to like collect himself. He left me sitting by myself. And there's people on both sides of me. And I'm just like, um, I just got I just got engaged. <laughs> 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 sitting by myself. That's beautiful. Was that at Blackbird? <laughs> no, huh? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 Blackbird's like right there. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 So very yeah. close. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he hasn't left you alone since. Wow. Too. Julie, can you tell us um, what's one thing you want the world to know about your husband? <laughs> He's just a genuinely good, good, good guy. Yeah. And I think that Naperville is very lucky to have someone like him doing this job. And he is Naperville 24 7. I, until three years ago, I would say I was number one priority, but I've kind of slipped to number two. But, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, no, he's just, just genuinely, he's very level-headed, um, even-keeled, and... Is it too script? A great sense of humor. He does everything with a great sense of humor. It's one of the first things I loved about him, and he got it from his mother. They laugh a lot which is really, really great. I think laughter is key. Yeah. I think that's one thing that we do all the time is yeah. lots of laughter, lots yeah. of jokes. Um, can you tell us what works well for you as a blended family? Everybody loves your pictures, by the way. I got a lot of compliments on your family photos. So you have a gorgeous family. I love your blended family. Thank you. Liz is the new head waitress at tonight. But, but what works well for your for your blended family? We uh, we said at the beginning because our kids were a little older when we met. Um, we just the youngest were in high school. We said we never have to live together. You don't have to live together. We're just going to have fun together. And so we planned a lot of great fun outings. Um, and the kids truly do love each other, and they're they're each other's best friends. And we just really they just love hanging out together. So we're lucky. It was actually funny because when we first met, our two youngest were 15 and 16, so they were, you know, sort of. We were sort of living together a little bit, but um, they were better together than they were apart. Our family, our our children. I mean, it was just funny. Kids, they were pain <laughs> It was just her kids. They were like awful. They, just, you know, but when they're all together. They're all good. It all works. And so it just works. And it was just a weird thing that happened, and we're very blessed that it did. It's really fun now. Because now they have children, and they're all moving home. And, but uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It looks like a ton of fun. And it's, it's so nice to have such a wonderful and warm family as yours at the helm of, at the helm of Naperville. So I appreciate that. What advice do you have? for people to balance work and family? Oh. 
Is that the is it balance? <laughs> <laughs> We're still working on that. I mean, I think that you just have to know that you do get to have a little bit of all of it. You know, it maybe some weeks and when he first became mayor. It was a lot at first, and, and I was sad that I didn't think we were seeing our kids as much as we should. And so we struggled a little bit to find that balance. Some weeks we don't see them as much, and some weeks we get to spend a lot of good time with them and with each other. So if there's particularly busy weeks, I know that we can try to find time for family and for each other. Oh, it seems to work. I think that it's, it's really tough because, I mean, tonight, for example, it's what ten o'clock right now or thereabouts? Early. Early. <laughs> We're just getting started. We're just getting started. So the thing is is that if you say yes to everything as, as mayor, you will not have any time for your family. Zero. And so um, we had to set some boundaries that you know like there's gotta be time for family. And I try to reserve the weekends, but then even on the weekends there are things that happen where these are big events and it's very important to be there and so it's hard. So you just try to, you really just try to, to prioritize and, and, and I'll tell you one thing, our city council, I have deputized them to represent the city in different functions and ribbon cuttings and ceremonies and, and they of course are have been very gracious and have done it and, and I'm grateful for that. But um, you know for, for us, I think that Regardless of what job it is, whether it's a public job or just like your job, um, prioritizing your family first is the key. I think that's I think that's so true, and I think that's great advice. I appreciate you saying yes to this and being here for this show. So thank you so much. For I really appreciate it. My last question for you. As mayor, what's one thing that you want to improve, or what's one thing that you're passionate about doing for the city in your position as mayor? Besides Alexis's new water. I have no idea that. I think you heard the pedal thing. Pedal club's not going to happen. Yeah, the pedal club's not going to happen. That's done. Megan would like her parking space. This is not an exciting answer, but I'll tell you, this is the answer. So like Naperville grew for decades, uh, and we churned out farm fields when we make sub subdivisions, going south and south and west and south and east. And um, our commercial districts didn't keep up. And so a, a community that's like all these bedrooms, a bedroom community, is very difficult to pay for the schools. And one of the reasons, one of the problems with that is you have higher taxes. And so to pay for great schools. We want great schools. We want wonderful parks and great schools. But the high taxes thing is not cool. And so the only way to offset that is with business development. Because the businesses, when they come, they contribute to the, their property tax, contributes to the school system, but there's no kids, no impact. And so it's really, really important to have a really well-balanced community. And, and so the whole thing I ran on was, how do we get this neighbor, neighborville back into balance? Because we're completely out of balance right now in terms of the residents and the business of the commercial district. And um, I mean, to give you an idea, Naperville is, these numbers vary depending on how you calculate it, but somewhere around 80% of our property tax base is from residents, 20% from commercial, which is crazy. Right. And um, Lyle's 50-50, mm -hmm. right? So, now, we're never going to be able to get 50-50 because of the way our community is and how, how sprawled we are, but, but still, we, could, we need to get a little bit better, and it, it does help. So one of my goals has been to work on that. I know it's not an exciting thing to talk about, but at the end of the day, people, if they can't afford to live here, then great schools, I mean, how are we going to do with the great schools and the great you know, parks, safe neighborhoods if you can't no one's there. pay for it? Right. Well, yeah. Right? So, well, I think it's very important, and I appreciate you and all of your efforts. On behalf of everybody in Naperville, I just want to thank you for all that you do. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, this weekend, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, our these all of the charities that we talked about. We're going to be raising money this weekend. We're throwing a big cancer awareness event here at Potter's in 2-9 all weekend long. 
So Matt, do you want to talk a little about what we're doing? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, first of all, thank you all for, for coming and, uh, and supporting Dana and uh, the talk show and supporting all these wonderful cancer benefits. And, and, Mr. Mayor, you've been phenomenal to, uh, to listen to and, uh, and to have a bar in this, uh, this community. It's been great to, to work with. Um, Dana caught me off guard on one Sunday afternoon. She was eating uh, lunch uh, with Ashley, Jeff, and her family. And, uh, we were planning for the cancer show. And, and uh, I think I was, it was, I was worn out with a long week of work. <laughs> and, um, and I normally don't work Sundays. Normally it's going to be off with yep. the family and everything. And, uh, and they came in, and, and Dana told me uh, Ashley and Jeff's story, and my heart just went out to, uh, to their whole family. And um, you know, I, I I was like, absolutely, can we buy your meal? And as I'm sitting there, I was like, that's not even like scratching the surface. That was something that we could do. And, and I told Dana I wanted to do anything that uh, we might be able to do to to help. Uh, Help her for the family and uh, a number of these charities that are in the community. And so Dana's been uh, phenomenal with with putting us all together and getting uh, everybody in the room uh, to to make something like this happen. And uh, we have uh, Junkyard Groove uh, performing Friday night, uh, and Saturday night we have Moon Money, and we're going to be charging uh, an optional uh, cover charge per se, and uh, and we'll also be making a donation as well. And so. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, and uh, I think it's phenomenal. And it's just—it's just a testament to the type of people that are here in Naperville. And so this is this is the community. We talk a lot. We call ourselves Bad, bad Moms. Um, that's our little group, and we—but we're—it's the village. It's the support system, and that's what Dana being Dana is all about. That's what the show is all about. These are all friends of mine. Um, and I'm so thankful to have you all in my circle, in my village, people that I can count on, people who say yes. Um, so I just, I just thank you all, and I, I just really, really appreciate it. Um, Junkyard Groove is going to take us home, and before they do that, I just want to thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for sharing the show. I think it's been a great show. I think it's been very important to just spread the word about some of the things that are happening in Naperville. Thank you to my studio audience. Everybody out here. Next week on Dana Being Dana, um, Women Supporting Women is one of the cornerstones of my show. I'm a big fan of that. I genuinely believe in women supporting women. And I want to be part of the movement where we support each other, we stand up for each other, and we help push each other forward. Um, I'm very proud of my entrepreneur friends, and I'm particularly proud of my friends who dedicate their careers to helping other people be their best. These ladies, I consider them to be beautiful inside and out. So we are back in the studio next week. Please tune in. I will see you next week. I want to thank my sponsors. Obviously, Potter's Place, Junkyard U.S. Safety Products and Apparel, Scene Chicago, who's here, GH Private Wealth Management Incorporated, and Veronica's House. They do my hair. <laughs> thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all so much. Good night. Smiling, smiling, which now you're